bloody trail. <laughs> Let's see where it leads. A pile of fresh clothes. <laughs> How convenient. All soaked in blood. Well, a fresh shirt is as good a lead as any. So, think you can identify the killer on the first try? Huh. Do you doubt me? What are you staring at, you crazy woman? So, here you are. The wounded eagle in its eyrie. What the hell? An Englishman here? Why are you wearing a dress? I understand your confusion. It's been a turbulent day, hasn't it? Do you have any idea who you're talking to, Brit? Indeed I do. You are the proud son of this house. Proud, but wounded. You keep it well hidden, but you're far too nervous to think straight. So please, let me explain while you catch your breath. I am Osai, son of Hassan. You are on my father's property, and yes, you had better start being convincing. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I have every reason to believe that you were involved in the murder of Mark Ridley. Are you accusing me? That's right, I am. I recovered the murder weapon. It bears an eagle crest, the same crest that is so proudly displayed within your house. And a proud house we are. My father speaks for all Ottomans on this island, remember that. Regrettably, I fail to detect much pride in the callow way you ambushed the corporal. It couldn't have been very comfortable for you inside that chest, waiting to catch the corporal off guard. Couldn't you find a better place to hide? You're a fine one to talk of tactics. You're dressed as a woman. If you'll pardon the metaphor, he was a fishbone that became lodged in your throat. You had a strong motive to see him dead. At the heart of this crime is a woman, Jalen. I wonder who she might be to you. Your wife? Mm, unlikely. Your s Enough! Don't you dare say a word about my sister. It was he who led her to sin. That son of a dog, Mark Ridley. He spat on our traditions and brought shame to our family. His father promised us peace, but I knew how it would be. You feed the crow, it tears your eyes out. So you've risked the peace to right your honor. I had no other choice. Not that you'd understand, Brit. Azai, you are under arrest for the murder of Mark Ridley. You'll have to come with me now. First you sneak into my house, and now this? We'll put you down like the rabbit dog you are. I'm coming for you. Too simple. Don't cry, you'll live. No more. 
The snuff's ready. Take a rest, my friend. No more crime for you until next month. Don't cry, you'll live. Give him the pepper snuff. The snuff's ready. Overcome him, don't rush. I couldn't miss the party. No more crime for you until next month. Too simple. It's time for you to go to prison, Azai. Come with me, and let's do so peacefully this time. You'll regret this, Brit. Get out of my face, Brit. You did everything right, Sherry, no matter what Mycroft or his henchmen will say. Mr. Holmes, I am in no position to reprimand you, but you should know that your unwarranted intervention will cost us dearly. I did what I had to do. The killer was brought to justice. I didn't expect you to be so narrow-minded. You have undermined your brother's efforts, and now we will have to face the consequences. Such is the price of law and order, Mr. Estevo. Everyone must be held accountable for their actions. Law and order? You are clearly oblivious of the bigger picture, Mr. Holmes. There is no point in us discussing it further. I bid you good day. You did everything right, Sherry, no matter what Mycroft or his henchmen will say.
And the kiss mark, it's... it's... Here to gawk at the bloater? Not at all, officer. Perhaps I can help. Help with what exactly? Solving an accident? Fellow drank himself to death, literally. Case closed. It's not the first case, neither. A few days ago, another drunken sailor drowned himself in a fountain. I would like to take a look around. Go ahead. Just don't disturb the evidence, all right? I still have to write my report. There's talk on the streets that a siren could be responsible for the drownings. A siren? You mean the bird woman kind? Why, of course, we've got sirens aplenty round here. Harpies, too. Oh, please. What can you tell me about the other sailor? Nothing to tell. Some rich chap complained about a dead body in a fountain. It wasn't me who inspected the scene, though. Should have gone easy on the bottle, if you ask me. They get to shore, they start drinking like fish. Too bad boo doesn't make them grow gills, eh? It's a good thing the tide hasn't washed away the tracks. I should inspect them more closely. The water is shallow and the slope is smooth. One would have to be dead drunk to drown here. His whole body is tense, stiffened by rigor mortis. A kiss on the forehead is quite intimate, but the vulgar lip rouge suggests a different type of intimacy. Interesting. Oh. Oh. The face is frozen in a contorted smile. His fingers are clenched as if he's clutching to life even now. Worn, soaked boots, size 8. Something smells fishy here, and it's not brine. Siren's song. Hm. The rumours weren't so absurd after all. There's still some left, just enough for a tipple.
the sediment contained cyanide. It turns out he was poisoned. Didn't Macabre say that fellow drank himself to death? He wasn't wrong. Light tobacco with a hint of citrus. A bright red lip rouge mark. What now? I've still got my report to write to make it. I hate to break it to you, officer, but it wasn't an accident. Care to elaborate, smartly boots? The bottle of wine I found near the victim had been poisoned with cyanide. He was dead before he hit the water. Whoa, that's a twist. Any leads on the poisoner? Nothing to put my finger on, but I might need to inspect the other drowned sailor. Well, of course, I won't stop you. It's not my case anyway. We had a complaint about a body in a fountain. Can't have bodies laying about in fountains, can we? It was somewhere in Scaladio, as far as I know. You think they're connected? That is what I intend to find out. Thank you.
Oh, look, they drained the fountain and removed the body. I'm too late. No matter, we'll work with what we have. Drowning in a two feet deep fountain? I've seen some things, but this really takes the biscuit. A cotton shawl, could it be our sirens? Worn leather tobacco pouch, salt stained from a long time at sea. Last week's newspaper, the front page reads, Sky is the limit, Governor funds Arsenal's second airship. Light tobacco with a hint of citrus. Hmm, a bright red lip rouge mark. A broken bottle with no label. The victim won't be needing his cap anymore. I might as well take it. This wine, again, don't sailors prefer spirits? Drained to the last drop. Ugh, the litter bin is right there. This sailor is another victim of the same woman. She poisoned him and pushed him into the fountain to make it look like an accident. Sherlock, the spot where you fell, I, I saw something. Maybe you should take a look. Me, the great detective is baffled by a piece of cutlery. Venetian copper soldi, authentic but worthless. A water soaked matchbox from the Drinking Dutchman must be a local pub. I'm shipping up to Boston in a few days.
What can I get you, mate? Nah, I'm good. Don't want to end up like that guy who drowned in the fountain after having one too many. Aye, I know the fella. Shame, damn shame. But let me tell you, it wasn't the drink that got him. It was a curse. Let me guess. You had something to do with this siren? No way, mate. That's just a daft superstition. I'm talking about a real curse here. He was from HMS Aculus. Some British schooner, nothing special. Except one of them Jack Tars shot an albatross. Everyone knows it's bad luck. Everyone. The dimwit brought the curse upon his old crew. Three are dead already. Wait, I've heard of only two such accidents. Are you saying that another man drowned? Drowned or not, they've all kicked the bucket. Just this morning, another member of the crew was found dead. It's a curse, I'm telling you. Now we're obliged to find out if it's real. It must indeed be the curse, but how do you know all that? Why, he told me the whole story himself. The victim told you? His crewmate. The one who killed an albatross, Harry Thorne. He's renting a room upstairs. Every day, he gets completely rat assed raving on and on about the bird around his neck. He's sleeping it off right now. But when the blight wakes up, it'll be the same thing all over again. Do you have a free room? Certainly do. Dirt cheap. Here's the key. Go pick anyone you like. Hey, Barky! Another one over here. Well, if it ain't Mr. Smarty Boots, guess what? You were right about the poisoning, but this time I'm ahead of the game. We've got another homicide on our hands. Same method, same everything. See for yourself. He suffered a head wound. There's caked blood in his hair underneath all the mud. A sharp, bloody rock stuck deep in the mud. The officer must have rolled the body over. 
An empty bottle of rum. There'd be no sirens. Looks like he slipped. This was clearly an accident. What did I tell you? We've a killer on the loose. I knew it. That may be true, but this here is very clearly an accident. The victim slipped and hit his head on a rock. I would have thought it obvious. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I thought I had all this sewn up. But you just had to come along and make me look like an idiot. I hope you're happy now, genius. Just move along. So it was a curse after all. The curse of clumsiness. I hope it's not contagious. Pour me another, bartender. Oh, the smell alone makes me feel groggy. He's really gone on a binge. The photo of the cursed crew. Here's Thorn, and right next to him, our first drowning victim. Crew of HMS Achilles, Cordona, 1879. The same as we saw earlier. She's pretty free with her kisses. Perhaps too much for her own good. <laughs> now we walk into a trap. Guns blazing. The game is afoot, Sherry boy. Well said. I think I'll borrow that line from you, old chum. He's out cold. No use trying to wake him. If he stopped drinking, the entire alcohol industry would collapse. Can I ask you a question? I'll be happy to help you. So listen to me.
Do you know anything about this? Oh, sorry. I know nothing about it. But I can please you in another way. Come on over, lovey. Don't be shy. I can see you're off for some fun. Madame Pauline will see you right. Girls, boys, a bit of both. Whatever tickles your pickle, darling. Some other time, perhaps. Yeah, I think we should interrogate some of them. Well, hell, all of them. Refresh your interior. Pick what you like. We have a large assortment and pleasant prices. The finest clothes for the finest citizens. Perfect choice.
Some other time, perhaps. Some other time, perhaps. I'm looking for the girl who wrote this letter. Perhaps you know who she might be? Let me see. No, I don't know, Lovey. I have a Lizzie here, but I doubt she can even spell her own name. And what's all this nonsense about a special client? This is a business we're running here, not a charity. I don't see what you're getting at. Cannot help you with this, Lovey. I don't see what you're getting at. Some other time, perhaps. Are you able to help me? Oh, sorry. I know nothing about it. But I can please you in another way. Can you satisfy my curiosity? No, honey. I've heard nothing. Oh, I am bored. Call me when you find the answer. What's that got to do with me? What's that got to do with me? Cannot help you with this, Lovey. Cannot help you with this, Lovey. I don't see what you're getting at. I'm looking for a specific girl. This is her shawl. Do you have any idea where she might be? Ah, I know who you mean. It's the goody two shoes down the street. She's not one of mine, though. She's not even a working girl, if I say so myself. Trust me, lovey. We'll give you a much better time. I don't doubt it, ma'am, but I have to see her first. Thanks for your help.
Harry, it's you. I knew you'd come. It's been so long, but you haven't changed a bit. I don't suppose you remember me, do you? You must be Eloisa, yes? I got your letter. Wonderful. No point beating around the bush, then. I've missed you, love. I wonder if you still have your prowess. Why don't we go to my place for some wine and something extra? How could I refuse such an offer from a pretty girl like you? Let's go right now. Wonderful. Follow me. It's not far from here. Well, here we are. Make yourself comfortable, love. There's wine on the table. You should have some, loosen you up. Bring out your naughty side. What will you drink with me? Uh, absolutely. I'll join you in a minute. I just need to powder my nose. All right then, I'll be waiting for you, pet. Did you just call her pet? Seriously, boy, you are truly hopeless, Sherlock. Siren's song. She is consistent, I'll give her that. The bottle was open and the cork replaced. Hey, if you want to keep this stupid act up, you better pour out the wine and quick. Hurry up, she'll be out any second. HMS Achilles, Friday, 5pm. She prepared for their arrival. The beloved child of a rich family. This lip rouge looks good on you. Just saying. White powder with a bitter almond-like odor. These are no smelling salts. It's cyanide. Ah, she's smoking citrus-flavored cigarettes. The dots connect. Oh, here she comes. Sorry for making you wait, sweetie. I hope the wine has kept you good company. Oh, yes. I needed to wet my whistle real bad. But the bottle is full. You didn't even take a sip. Come on, drink it. I insist. I have to decline. I believe the contents may be detrimental to my health. Wait, wait, wait what's happening? It's time I drop my act. This beard is false. I'm not Harry Thorne. Oh, I see. You're from the police then, yes? Here to question me? There's no need. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I know that you killed Thorne's crewmates, and I know why. Well, Mr. Holmes, you can save your breath. I won't deny a thing. But please, stop tormenting me with this farce. Do what you must. I will keep it a secret, but you do have to stop. How can I stop now, after all I've done? I thought it would bring me solace. Stupid. It is too late. You cannot undo what you've done. That much is true, but it's not too late to move on. It's never too late. You're right. You must be right. I knew it all along. I just didn't have it in me to admit it. I'm glad that you do now. And here's your shawl. Try not to lose it again. I won't. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you so much. 